Nothing on the Bonnell Foundation's Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast should be considered medical advice. Medical advice can only come from your CF physician. Cystic fibrosis can be a devastating diagnosis, but living with the disease can bring positivity and a new appreciation for each day. From the Bonnell Foundation in Detroit, Michigan, it's the Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast, sponsored by Beatrice, Genentech, and Vertex. Here's your host, Laura Bonnell. Have you ever heard of the Live Fearlessly Foundation? It's Jacob and Daddy's creation, and Jacob is a social media impact entrepreneur, community builder, multimedia producer, keynote speaker, big wave surfer, and passionate advocate for the cystic fibrosis community. 29-year-old Jacob also has CF. He was actually on the transplant list with a lung function of 15%, and then he was given the latest CF modulator, and his lung function jumped up to 50%. He is off the transplant list now. What great news. He has experienced only one pulmonary exacerbation in the past three years. And Jacob will tell us all about all he does to help the CF community. And welcome, Jacob. It's so great to have you. I've seen you all over social media, and now we get to meet via Zoom. So thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning, Laura. I'm so excited for the opportunity to chat with you today. We have so much exciting things going on. We do. And first of all, tell me how you came up with your foundation and what you try to do. The idea of Live Fearlessly Foundation was manifested through hours and, you know, weeks in the hospital, you know, one pulmonary exacerbation to the next. With all that downtime, I had to think of ways and things to do to get my mind off of the severity of the situation and keep pushing to get healthy. And for me, it was the thought of getting back out in the ocean to catch another wave. And that pushed me to want to be healthy because... That was my passion. And so experiencing that feeling, those emotions, that led me to creating Live Fearlessly Foundation because I want to help others with CF find their passions. Then they can have something to look forward to while they're in the hospital. And what kind of grants do you do that gives people something to look forward to? Live Fearlessly Foundation offers an activity grant, which is $150 towards any activity the CF recipient believes will help their CF. It can be anything, you know. It can be art. It can be sailing, surfing, biking. The list goes on and on. What have you heard back from some of the people you've helped? Tell us kind of what some of the more popular or maybe one of the most uncommon requests that you got and how you fulfilled it. It's been amazing because one person with cystic fibrosis will see another person with CF do something they thought might have not been possible because of their condition. And they will reach out to me and ask me if I can help them go do it. You know? And so it's, it's just so cool. I, I've seen everything, you know. To me, what touched me the most was four-year-old Ava in Texas. In the Texas hospital, she was in the hospital for a, a year because she had a double bilateral lung transplant. And while she spent time in the hospital, she had a bike that the nurses would take her around on. And I was able to get through to her and her family. And she made a video. It was one of the most adorable and inspiring things I've ever seen. Wow. And yeah, we, we got her the grant. Now she's out of the hospital doing good and like hanging on the beach. And we got her a bicycle with the grant and I love them all. I don't have a favorite, but that was a really great one. That is a great story. And what other sorts of things are people asking for grants for? I mean, you mentioned art. Is it taking classes? Yeah. How's this one? Eileen Henderson, living in Ireland. She has cystic fibrosis, but doesn't let that stop her. And she is an incredible singer. You know, like she uses her lungs as her power you know, it's it's amazing. There's all sorts of things. So she took um, voice lessons with your grant? Well, she was already a singer, but she got more voice lessons with the Live Fearlessly Activity Grant. That is wonderful. And what state are you based in? I'm based in Wilmington, North Carolina. North Carolina, and you help people anywhere they ask for help from? 21 states in the U.S. and 11 countries in the world so far. 
That is fantastic. And you also feature some really fun videos of people that you've helped as well. Yeah. So because I'm a grassroots foundation and um, I really established my activity grant program last June, I made a requirement for the activity grant. You know, one day, hopefully I'll have the resources to just help people out without asking for anything in return. I'm just not there yet when I'm building from the bottom, right? But Mm -hmm. the requirement is for the CF recipient to send me a video saying their name, age, why their activity of choice helps their CF, or if they're a young kid just saying that they have CF, and then thank the foundation. And so along with a photo and or video of them doing the activity. And so everything I've created and put on the Instagram, (coughs) excuse me, and um, yeah, it's all there. I think that's wonderful. I mean, we do it too. I think it's important to show what our foundations are doing for people, right? Because if people don't know, then they won't donate or they won't realize how much we're helping people. So I think it's very important to put out there what we're doing. It's one thing to say something and it's another thing to do it. Actions speak louder than words. And so because I'm on this podcast today, I went and counted each activity grant again, you know, just to get up to date on it. And I've reached 100 now. Congrats. Halfway to my goal for the year. My goal is 200. I believe that we will achieve it. And everything will be in our show notes. So if people want to apply, that information will be there. Are you able to grant everyone's? I'm almost at the point where everybody I've already given a grant, I'm going to give another one, which, you know, will easily let me reach my goal. But um, I haven't quite got there yet. But I I have some fundraisers coming up. I believe it's all going to come together just the way it should. That's outstanding. You're you're 29 years old. You are doing so much at a young age. How does what you do for others make you feel? I feel it's my purpose because being in the hospital all those years and and going through that, it, it was tough for me. So... I know what it's like, and through living it and knowing, I feel like that's why I can relate to every individual that I help out personally and making it more meaningful, right? Well, I love your enthusiasm. I love how you portray your foundation and yourself on social media. You're so positive. You're full of fun and lots of energy, which I think is so refreshing to see how engaged you are with the CF community. I am really grateful for all you're doing. And I want you to talk a little bit about your personal history. Like when were you diagnosed? How did your parents handle the diagnosis? And how has your life been up to these 29 years and now that you are on that CF modulator? I was diagnosed at six weeks old, and my parents, they had been there for me a little bit growing up, but mainly I had to be there for myself. I had to show up for myself and make sure to make doctor's appointments, do my treatments, and, you know, want to be healthy, stay active, right? That's been a cornerstone to my health. You know, going through all of these experiences with CF is what gives me so much passion to helping the CF community. What did this do to your mental health? How did you keep strong? Like before you got to the foundation, how has your 29 years been? And when did you get to that point where you thought, I'm going to do this foundation because this is important to me? So were you pretty healthy until you weren't? And, you know, just give us a little bit of history about your journey. It was tough for me growing up with CF. Like, no joke, like I was very ill up until the new modulator was released. Was it four years ago now? 2019. Yeah, I was on a lung transplant list, like you said. And then back it up before that, I was in the hospital three or four times a year at the point where I could hardly walk up a flight of stairs. And that was tough. And what I had to do was have faith and believe in myself and hang in there. Although I can say all these things, there was moments that I didn't feel that way, of course. I think that's natural as a human. And it was very tough, but I chose to be a victor and not a victim. And now that I'm healthy, 
I can funnel my energy into helping other people. And that's where, where I'm at and why I'm so passionate. I'm glad you shared that because we all struggle to some extent. You know, I mean, life is hard and there are all sorts of struggles. So I think it's really important that you brought that up and then you got to where you are now able to help others. And like I always say, my foundation is my therapy. I find it so rewarding not only to just do this podcast with you and find out about you, but also it's really uplifting and it's really helpful. So thanks for sharing that. Yep. As you decided, you know, you wanted to help each other, like I said, you're still very young. And I think even parents who are raising their kids and they're in the midst of raising their kids, sometimes they don't know everything that's out there in the CF world. And that's what you were just starting to talk about, which was the disparity in other countries where people don't have access to all the drugs that they need. And one thing you're doing is is helping out a little bit in that area, correct? Yeah, correct. The thought of the life expectancy in countries being seven to 14 years old, like in India, or six years old in Gaza, Palestine, it hurts to think about that, you know? Like, it's so sad. Like, for me, I miss one day of enzymes, and it's just like a complete diarrhea. Sorry, but, you know, it's, it's, it's awful. Like, I couldn't imagine never being able to digest food. It's just, it just sounds gut-wrenching. Right. And that's one thing we talked about. That's why it's important for what you're doing. And, you know, as I told you before we started this podcast, I did talk to doctors in India and the same is happening in Egypt and in Thailand. They aren't able to take enzymes every day because they can't afford to either give two children enzymes or even if it's one child, They'll have to do it every other meal or every other day. And then yeah. Egypt does not have sustainable liquid vitamins for their infants. And in India, they're dying before they're even diagnosed of malnutrition. They never even have lung issues because they're so sick from their gut, never digesting food that they're just full of bacteria and just it's heart wrenching. You never, it's, it's sad. And um, I feel like, you know, I want to do everything I possibly can to help these people out. And so, so far, we've received 80 bottles of enzymes through donations through our very kind, loving CF community here. And we have a lot of stuff in the works. But I also think we have to do it in a sustainable way just to give Egypt a bunch of liquid vitamins isn't sustainable. They can't run out in six months and then wait for the next donation. We can't keep giving donations. We have to figure out how to make it sustainable for them or it won't work. They cannot rely on us, just us. We have to do it a combined effort with all of us and work with the World Health Organization and do something organized to change the way that it happens. Because there are so many generous people, but we have to make it really work. It can't just be the CF community. It can for now. That's our start, right? Right. I agree. Luckily, we live in such a great country and we have the resources. Well, I think that you are fabulous. I think you have wonderful passion and I think you're definitely part of the answer. I think you're way ahead of the game in many respects of some people who could do more, but aren't. And I think you continue to be an inspiration and don't stop. I also think we're planning and working for change and it will happen. We're going to make it happen, but I think you're right. It can't be about one drug even or one disease. We have to change this for the chronically ill. It's really important. And you're only 29 and people older than you don't even understand it yet. So bravo to you because I think you're changing the world. So it's really important. Thank you. I do want to get back to your foundation and all that you're doing so that if people are interested in taking advantage of your programs, how do they go about that? To apply for a Live Fearlessly activity grant, 
send me a direct message on Instagram or an email at jacobv at livefearlesslyfoundation.org. And again, that's on our show notes. You have talked to some of the parents. What is the feedback from parents after you're able to give them a grant that helps their kids? You know, that's what keeps me going. It's the feedback from the parents. They're incredible. They uplift me. They tell me how much they need it. You know, some people are desperate. Cystic fibrosis is a serious disease, and it's not cheap to maintain this illness. There's so many out-of-pocket expenses that, you know, I can go off and off on right now, but like people need help, and that's why I'm here. And it's wonderful. I also wanted you to talk about, we have a beautiful photo of you. You're surfing. Tell us about how that came into your life and the importance of it today. Yeah, I'm lucky to be alive, not just from CF perspective, but also from the position I've put myself out in the ocean throughout the years. I tend to be the type of person that pushes my limits in every direction of my life. And when it's focused in, in surfing, I've been able to surf waves, you know, that are very big. <laughs> That picture that you shared with me, the way, I mean, that's enormous. That wave is, that's a crazy, beautiful picture. The forecast that day said that it was a 12 to 15 foot day, and that's judged by the back of the wave. Face of the wave is double that size. Wow. That is interesting and crazy. And we both know Dylan Mortimer, and he was telling me how Piper's Angels staff helped him learn how to surf one day. And he was saying how extremely difficult it is, but how those of you that surf, you know how to read the waves, you know how to read the ocean. Oh, yeah. It's just incredible. The most difficult part is knowing which wave to go on. (laughs) When you're surfing, what feeling do you have? Oh, my gosh. That's such a great question because what surfing does to me is it gives me something to not think about anything else in life and just focus on what's going on in that very moment. And that's why it's so important because it, to find your passion and find your way of doing that, right? Because you have to have that from time to time. Living with CF, it can be burdensome on you and it can be scary, right? So being able to get out in the ocean and only focus on what's going on right then in that moment, what wave is coming, being in the right position, that's what surfing does for me. That's incredible. And in case anybody doesn't know, um, some people with cystic fibrosis take hypertonic saline solution and the salt water is supposed to be so great for your lungs. Do you notice that when you're surfing or when you're near the water? Oh, yeah, for sure. You can taste it almost. And it helps me cough up any excess mucus I may have. And luckily, you're in the ocean, so you can just spit it up right there and it just washes away. You never see it again. (laughs) That's fantastic. How have you grown as a surfer? Like since you started, how do you consider yourself as far as surfing goes? Like how often do you surf? I surf a lot. I use it as a lung therapy now. So I'll surf when the waves are one foot till the waves are 20 foot, right? And yeah, I use it as a physical therapy. And also surfing is my joyful movement. So I do it subconsciously. I check the waves every day because I love to surf and That's great that you asked that because that's so important. Like I go to the gym too and, you know, work on other things and I can do that. But that sometimes is more difficult for me to do than going in the ocean. Going in the ocean, I love being there. And so when you become passionate about something, you find that you do it more often. That is wonderful. And has anyone requested from you that they are taught how to surf as their grant? Yes, many people Boston, all the um, Ellie Heath, Kimberly's, Houston's kids, McKinsey and Kelsey Houston, uh, C.T. Shaw's kid, Ivy Shaw. So it's pretty popular. Yeah, yeah, many, many people. And it's growing and it, it's so cool but to be that person that can encourage others to do something. You know, they may have thought scary, but they do it anyways. They live fearlessly. And I see why you picked that name. What are your hopes for the future, for your foundation, and for yourself, your own health? Five years from now, I hope to have helped thousands of people with CF all over the world. For myself, I hope to just stay healthy and energetic like this that I am right now. I'm feeling better than I ever have. 
before and I just want to keep this momentum up because I know it's so meaningful what I'm doing and that's my goal. That is terrific. I think you're doing great things and touching so many people. I just enjoy learning more about you. And, you know, like you said, we got to work together. Together we're stronger and together we can make a difference. I agree 100%. And yeah, we're in this together and forever, right? Yeah. There's no end in sight for us. I look forward to working with you beside you in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jacob, for all you're doing and for being a partner with the Bonnell Foundation. Thank you very much, Laura. I appreciate this opportunity. Hope you have a great day. Thank you. The original music in this podcast is performed by Kevin Allen. It's not complicated. Who happens to have cystic fibrosis. We all got our worries and fears. I know what's got you frustrated. But loving you is so all right. This has been the Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast. For more information and to learn more about the Bonnell Foundation, visit our website at thebonnellfoundation.org. That's the B-O-N-N-E-L-L foundation.org. This podcast was sponsored by Beatrice, Genentech, and Vertex. It was produced by Jag and Detroit Podcasts. Follow our show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now.